All right, we got a huge update from T-Mobile. Their quarterly earnings is disclosed along with the annual kind of summary and then what they're going to be doing in the future. If you're a forward-looking person and you're excited about what T-Mobile's got to offer, this is a huge video for you. It tells us everything we need to know about Sprint, about their Spectrum, their N41 build, the 3.45, 3.7 N77 millimeter wave, the you know the Sprint churn, ARPU, ARPA, network, shutdowns, all, everything, home internet, it's all on here. All right, let's go through all the actual factuals. Okay, first of all, <laughs> some of the lowlights. Uh, continue to make excuses about Sprint and the churn. We also got the laugh of the day from Eugene. He said, we have the second best millimeter wave portfolio. The man from T-Mobile actually spoke and mentioned millimeter wave. That was a good laugh. Anyways, greatest growth momentum in our history, underrepresented market growth, best industry churn. I, I, again, I, I can't co-sign that. Sprint still is a nightmare. Uh, the Sprint churn is really, really high. Uh, they continue to kind of you know, report that separately and all of that. Uh, a lot of premium upsell is working for them. They're starting to sound a little bit more like Verizon every day. Uh, they have landed more government agency and business accounts. They are mainstreaming the home internet. Small market rural areas will be a big focus, but they say that they are converting in urban and suburban for home internet. Hard to believe, but they did mention that. 64% of Sprint customers are migrated uh, to T-Mobile to Network. They will be doing the billing system migration throughout the year towards the end of the year. They say it will be seamless. That's a hoot. Uh, that will be a challenge. Uh, so expect that end of year. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, they are expecting Sprint churn to be better through the year. He admitted that competitors are taking Sprint customers, but he doesn't mind. I'm guessing he thinks he's going to get them back later. I don't know. Anyways, they do have some free cash flow now. That's great. Investors will be happy because maybe they could start that share buyback uh, initiative they want to do. Prepaid wise, they did grow 49000 at and added 29000 Verizon lost 85000 so as a comparison, that's what you got. They moved 205,000 prepaid customers to postpaid. That's good. That is an ARPU increase from $39.32 to like $47 or $48 postpaid ARPU. So that's good. Uh, some other stuff they talked about was the T-Mobile home internet. Okay, so 660,000 customers. They had the industry best ads. That's for all home internet. That's not just like fixed wireless. So that's huge. 55% of new customers are taking Magenta Max, right? So that what he, Eugene, Mike Seaver, said he's attracting the industry's best customers. Again, starting to sound more like Verizon, the more premium customers hire our poo. Fewer than 50% of postpaid customers are on Magenta Max. That's an area they want to run with. Uh, the ARPU and ARPA, obviously, higher per account when you get more people with Magenta Max lines. Some other stuff there. 260 million pops of 5G UC N41 end of year, 300 million pops end of 23. He did say that they are two years ahead of Verizon. They will be focusing on rural 5G low band, apparently, still. That's a thing. Uh, Sprint keep sites are going to be important to them this year. 13 to 13.5 billion dollar capex, 3.45, 3.7 gigahertz, the N77 C band. Those radios are going to be probably going up at the start of next year. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, they're probably going to want to just put up one set of radios for all of that N77 and call it a day. Shutting down CDMA and 3G, 200,000 devices still using it, mostly non-usage, end-of-life devices from non-responsive customers. Low revenue, low usage, they're not worried about it. Home Internet has three times higher customer satisfaction rating than cable. 40% of those customers are not even wireless customers, so they're looking at that as growth opportunities. Lower customer acquisition costs because of that. Vice versa, they like their growth from cable, and they are still growing even though cable is in mobility now as MNO. So things are looking pretty good for them, according to them. Um, they are saying that most of their home internet customers continue to come from urban and suburban, and they're taking fiber and cable. I ain't buying it. That's all cap. There's just no way, no how. There's more. We're going to talk more about it in the podcast. Your thoughts and opinions welcome down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. Give this video a like and a share. Subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notifications. We'll see you all at the podcast. Peace.